Okay, we're all set. All set. Okay. And once upon now, a time. <laughs> once upon a time, here is John Ott. Now, he's buried on 38th Street, you know, at that cemetery out there. And there's his wife. And if you get a magnifier, you can see that there's one of the children's pictures in there, I think. Oh, my. We, could, we didn't make it to try, mm -hmm. but that's her date on there. And she's buried out there, too. These are 11 of their 13 children. I don't know what other two I'm missing, but... I'm missing two. Now, I know Elizabeth was the baby. Uh, Emma, of course, was grandma. It would be your great-grandma. And uh, mm. Elizabeth is the one that burned to death. Mm. She lived with grandma. John C. Fremont is the one we called Uncle John. Mm -hmm. And he lived there, too. Well, see, they, they were infant deaths. Oh, I see. And... So they kept renaming them the same name. He was determined he was going to get a John, a John C. Fremont. Isn't that amazing? Because he was so, thought he was such a fantastic person. And here's the oldest child. And see, I put down when they died so you can figure out yeah. how old they were. Great. Um, here's Grandma. So that should Good be picture. Good picture. That was her engagement picture. Now, now, are these pictures reproductions or? Yes. And did you do that with the copier, or did you do that with uh, uh, an actual color copy? Color is copy. It? Wow. So I told you that nice place job? is great. Yeah. This is Lizzie Summerlin, the one that burned to death. And here's an old other picture of them when they were older. Here was Aunt Lizzie. And there's Clara Balwig, who was a good friend of them, theirs. And here's Emma Ott Bailey, that was my grandma. And here's her sister, Anna Ott Burner. And that's uh, Elsie Burner, who was her daughter. That was taken at Clara Balwig's home in the 20s. Okay, now here's John Ott when he started out. He was on the corner of Dakota and Morris Street. And he was the one, that's a sleeping sofa. He was the inventor of that. Oh, my, my. Looks like it folds out. Yeah, just like what they got yeah. now. My, my. And here was the, the price list of frames. <laughs> that is really something. And this we reduced down. It had been huge, more legal size, bigger than legal size. And that was a flyer he passed out. And that was his sofa bed. <coughs> and that was his barber chair that he had a patent on. There's his patent office stuff. See, that's his signature. He spoke seven languages. Oh. And here is uh, about history of Indianapolis, and there's about him in it. Great. And I took a class in antique photography, and the woman that gave the class was doing research on John Ott. She found this in the Daily Journal, which was a paper just like our Indianapolis News. And so she gave me a copy. And there it's telling about how he, that was when he first opened his shop on Washington Street. It's the August the 19th, 1851. Mm. Now, here's the chair. Yeah, just like that picture uh, you showed me. Yeah, and it said he was a U.S. explorer and political leader who surveyed and mapped the wilderness of western USA. He led the 1845 revolt against Mexico, which resulted in the secession of California, he ran for president in 1856 as the first candidate of the Republican Party. Hmm. My, my, my. Now that's the chair that I have mm -hmm. that great grand that great grandfather made. This is the chair that he made for my grandmother when she was a little girl, mm -hmm. and that was green plush, and it was filled with horse hair, which was extremely rough to sit on and Kathy has that chair now. So that's what he put in for stuffing? Yes, that's what they used to use. Now who is that that's sitting there in the chair? Me! Oh! <laughs> that's great. Mm -hmm. And this is a sewing stand that John Ott made and here is his dimensions and his drawing. Mm -hmm. The only thing that he changed was he only put one handle instead of the two that he had originally wanted. Mm -hmm. This used to be in Grandma's bedroom, and then Emma got it, and now Dorothy Ann has it at her home. Mm -hmm. 
And this is one of the drawings that's in the Smithsonian. Hmm. Looks like a, like a buffet piece or something. Yes, it is. Uh, he called it his uh, sideboard. Boy, look at all the measurements for the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. lumber to build it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's one of his bookcases with all the dimensions. And that's a bureau that he designed. And then that's a letterhead from L.W. That was after John uh, Ott, after the Civil War. Well, during the, before the Civil War started, he gave his furniture uh, factory to Governor Morton because he wanted it to make bullets for the Indiana militia. He didn't like what they were serving out from the government. So he made his own, and after the war, then grandfather had L.W., who was his son, take it over. And this is, again, something that he upholstered. And here's from the history of Indianapolis, and it tells about Ott and Madden, because L.W. couldn't do it as well as grand great-grandfather, so he went in with Madden, <laughs> and then they were Ott and Madden, and mm -hmm. there's a picture of their building. Mm -hmm. And that was in 1883. Mm -hmm. And then they had a fire, and so they split. And Ott stayed Ott, and Madden went on to where he is now, where he's just closing up. And this is a map that shows grandfathers. at Shelby County, mm -hmm. and he his ranch was 280 acres. Mm -hmm. And it's right down here where the little thing is. It's uh -huh. Herrick, Cowden Herrick, little town, little towns. And here's pictures of this is the corn he was growing mm -hmm. for his cattle. It was strictly a cattle yeah. place. Of course, that's not still in the family or anything, is oh, it? Oh, no, no. Grandma lost it in the Depression. Yeah. Um, and there's the ranch there. I didn't even know we had it till we lived on Delaware Street when I was in college. And one of the neighbors had known the family. And she said, you still have the ranch? And I came home and I said, do we have a ranch? <laughs> and Mom said, no. <laughs> okay, so that was my mama. And these are the orphans, the Brennans, uh, John and Lizzie, that Grandma took in. They were first cousins, and Grandma took them in when their parents died. So they lived with them. And there's Gus and, How and old were Grandma. How they, they took them in? Young. They were young. In their teens or younger than that? I have no idea. And here's my mama, and there's Gussie, and there's Grandma. And there's Grandma and John Ott her father in the horseless carriage and this he's in the front yard at 2040 that was where they put the front porch on mm -hmm. and there's a thing about it. it should be one when he was 87 yeah there's the one when he was 87 that tells you all about how he was the he put up the first brick building on Washington Street and he was also a doctor so that tells you about his mm. doctor my my and you, you learn a lot about it. He died when he was 89, so he died after that. Then when I went back to get those kind, I discovered these, which are archival. I'm not sure whether those are or not. These are. Now, what's the difference between that, meaning what's archival and what's not? Uh, if it's not archival, this may stick to it. Oh, I see what you're and saying. And then it would not be as good uh -huh. as these, because these won't stick and they oh, won't you're come off. Plastics. Yes. Oh, I got you. So this is Francis Patrick Bailey and Emma Ott, and that's my grandmother and grandfather, and these are their children, Bud, John, John James. It took me a while to find out what that was, and Augustus Lewis, that was Gus, and Julia Marcella and Emma. And then this goes back to Michael Bailey, who was grandfather's father, and Marcella Monica Daly, and they lived in Dublin, Ireland. Mm -hmm. And they came over when the potato famine was. And there was John Ott and Julia Rexroth. Now, Rexroth is, uh, they started Rex Typewriter Company. But oh, yeah. because of World War I, they didn't want to think they were Germans, so they took the Roth out and they became Rex. Mm -hmm. But they're from Bavaria, Germany. Now, here was Francis Patrick Bailey in 1882. This was his engagement picture, like the other one was Grandma's. Grandma didn't like these, <laughs> so when he took a nap, she got her embroidery scissors out and cut half off. Oh. So, see, for the wedding, he was nice and clean-shaven. 
Well, that yeah, I can see why somebody wouldn't like that kind of beard. <laughs> well, her brothers were all clean shaven, and she just yeah. didn't care for that. <laughs> now that's a beautiful picture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And here are their five children, and when they were born, and when they died. <laughs> and there's Bud. He was the oldest. And here he is again in his little riding outfit. And that's Gus with his little, see the curl collar. <laughs> but that's Gus. But look at that. Look at how long his hair is with curls. It looks, it makes him look well, like look how long it is down here. Yeah. He was the baby boy. So Grandma wouldn't let it be cut. <laughs> and then they caught on fire from a firecracker. And Grandpa was home. And he, he just said, that's it. And he and took him over. Off. And he had him cut <laughs> off. And Grandma cried, but that's too bad. <laughs> and this is a cart that, with cereal on top that the boys made. Mm -hmm. And they had a billy goat that pulled it. And the man wouldn't, this is taken in, his, in, in the photographer's studio. That's just a backdrop. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't let the billy goat come up. So that's why they all look sour pussy. Because <laughs> they wanted the billy goat in the picture. Yeah. And Gus had fallen down and got a hole in his knee. <laughs> So they put him in the cart and put his hand over it. Over the and, wall. Yeah. And later the photographer enlarged that. That was the one that was three foot by four foot. And he colored it and he took it to Chicago World's Fair and won first prize. Oh my. And Chicago, New Orleans, and New York were Grandpa's beat when to sell furniture. And he was going down the street and he saw it in a window. Mm. And he went in and he told the man, he says, that's my family. You don't have authority to have this picture, and you sell it to me right now. So that's what he did. So he bought the picture. He got the picture. And then so he ended up, I mean, how big was the picture again? Three foot by four foot. Wow. That's and it huge. was, it's beau it was a big frame. Yeah. And I had, it, Grandma had it in her front parlor over, over the set T. And uh, I had it here. And then when Marge came last year to help me clean house for a month, I gave it to her. Because every time she comes, she says, that is so beautiful. <laughs> I have just a place that would go for that. Now, it won't be in the sun, and I'm going to have the whole dining room refixed, just so go with it. I mean, what could I say? Gee whiz. I think she had her heart set on it. <laughs> she did, so I gave it to her. What the heck, oh. you know? Now, that, who, now, you said Marge had that. So Marge, is her last name's? Uh, uh, Sprunger, is that the Yeah, one? right. It's yeah. in her, it's in her dining room. And this was my mama's, and this was chalk, colored with chalk, mm. and it had gotten dusty around the edge, mm -hmm. and Marge went to clean it out, and bless her heart, she, didn't, she I said, now just go around the edge, and yeah. pretty soon, for, oh, it's a little dusty here. Yeah. Well, you took part of her hair coloring, <laughs> and she said, oh, she said, that's not, and I said, oh, yes, it is. You stop. So she yeah. did. But uh, that was done. That's the way they colored them. I think that was taken about the same time because the same outfit. Mm -hmm. And Emma's was a, a long one, and Mama's was just a short. And I thought you'd enjoy this. This is from the Sisters of Province, and it's a bill for $2.40 for piano lessons for Francis and John. Mm -hmm. And Francis was 14 and John was 12. Hmm. You like that? Yeah. And here is a picture of Grandfather in front again. I don't think Grandma had the porch front porch put on until after he died. And there's Emma looking out the window. Mm -hmm. And here is Emma in same place again with Tata Ool. And Tata Ool was grandmother's aunt. So that made her great aunt and my great great aunt. Mm. And these are the people that were cousins of the Bailey children. See, there's Elsie Burner, that was Aunt Anna's daughter. And uh, there's Lizzie and John Brennan, mm -hmm. those were the orphans. And uh, there's Lewis Rexroth and uh, Frank and William and Richard Ewell. They own meat markets. And uh, Robert, I don't know what he did. There is Grinslade, who was the sister of Robert Ewell. I don't know if you've heard of Thomas Grinslade. He was a big muckety muck here in town. And Sidensticker, Mrs. George Sidensticker. I think Sidensticker was a mayor at one time. Maybe not. He was in politics some way. 
and then Tom Grinslade on Grinslade Construction. So that just gives you a little background of who the families were. Mm -hmm. And there's Emma with that, with that hat. And I had that baby carriage at one time. I think we gave it back to the Frommies. And there's Emma. And this girl appears in quite a few pictures, so she might be a cousin. And here's Bud's first communion picture. Here's Mama's first communion picture. See, they were 15 when they made their first communion. Mm -hmm. This was the first St. Agnes Academy. Uh, bishop Chartrand wasn't a bishop then, was father. And he thought that there should be Catholic education for the children. So they bought this mansion and they started teaching. And Mother started fourth grade with there. And this was uh, September 15th, 1909, it started with an enrollment of 42. And my mother was one of the 42, and Emma was one of the other 42. Mm -hmm. But see, this was when, it, see, it still has the old mansions in the background yeah. there. And this was the gas light that they had, mm -hmm. they had uh, on, on uh, Meridian Street. I thought that was a neat picture. Oh, yeah. And there's Emma. And see, that's the old St. Agnes. Mm hmm. And that's her, this is her immediate class. Mm -hmm. Here she is with that girl again. And they're standing in front. And that's a picture of her. Cute. Well, you don't see too many pictures that are older like that with them being mm -hmm. a bit animated. Yeah. That's kind of unusual. Mm -hmm. My mama took those pictures. <laughs> and then when she was a senior in 1912, one of their assignments was to write an autobiography. So mother wrote this, and it was very interesting because I had no idea she'd fallen out of a second story window when she was a kid. <laughs> but as you read that, you'll find that. And right. here's mama that's there. That's neat stuff in this. This is yeah. great. That's mother, and that's her classmates. There were only 10 in her class, oh, and that was in the back of St. Agnes. And when I went, they still had this thing, a pump there. Yeah, the water pump. Mm-hmm. And there she is in her cap and gown. And here's Emma. She graduated the next year. She's on the front porch there at St. Agnes. And there she is with her classmates. There were more in her class. And there's Emma there. She got in the shade. And here's Elizabeth. Isn't she sweet? Mm -hmm. And here's John. It's the Zoros. The Zoros? And that was a social club. Oh. He was the social butterfly of the family. Oh. And so those were his friends. And they had old dances and stuff, uh -huh. you know. But I thought that was interesting. I don't yeah. know who any of the other boys are. Yeah. And here it was when Francis and John went to Notre Dame. I didn't know that. Yes, they did. Uh, they went to high school there. So was it Notre Dame High School? No, no. Notre Dame? They called it, uh, yeah, what do they call it? They call it something else preparatory department and so yes that was where they went and they went there until uh, grandpa died and then they couldn't afford to go there anymore so grandma brought them home well she didn't want them to go anyway she wanted them home with her she didn't want them far away and but anyway one of alice's boys saw this i took it for when i was there at easter and they were so excited oh this is where i am Oh, this is where the, I was just there the other day. He said, and he had brought some of his classmates with him. And he says, oh, I want to take one of those back with me. And I said, well, maybe my, your mom will let you do it, you know, because he wanted to show it. And I, I said, where's Corby Hall? And he showed me and he says, that's where the priests live now. And that's where the boys had lived when they were there. And there is Gus. And I got this from George Weldon. Before he passed on, he sent him to Mama. He was going through his books, and he found this one of Gus, and he wrote the date, for April of 1906. And this is Bud. And there was their dog. That was Jerry, their dog. <laughs> and here was the thing that when Grandpa died, and it was in the news, and then Mom wrote this poem in the next month about how lonesome is our home once gay our circle is so still since our dear one has passed away we know it is god's will mm -hmm. she was a, and then this was from the history of greater indianapolis and the guy spelled it wrong it should be r-e-x-r-o-t-h yeah. um and this is 
his handwriting, Francis Patrick's mm -hmm. handwriting. And this is the picture of Duke Street in Dublin, Ireland, where great-grandfather Michael Bailey was born. And I have a picture that's this picture that's in a frame. If you'd like to take it home with you, it's yours. And then this is a memorial record book, A Distinguished Men of Indianapolis, and that's all about grandfather. And then this was the boys' businesses. They had Crown Manufacturing, which is the furniture polish. And here's an inside picture, which I thought was... And if you can blow that up, you can find out what year it was, because there's a calendar on the wall. And this says Bailey's crown on, on oh, the yeah. thing in background and uh, so that's Gus and here is uh, John and Bud and that's the outside of the building see mm -hmm. this is that right yeah. there and that was at Senate and 21st Street and it showed who they were Bud was the president because he was the oldest and then Gus was the vice president and John was the secretary. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he got to be secretary, but anyway, <laughs> that's what it was. I don't know who the lady is. And here's John's card for Bailey Polish. Okay. And here's a little thing that they had told about it. And what happened was after grandfather died, because he had been their main person to sell since as he sold furniture, he sold a polish to go with it. So it sort of died and they went mm -hmm. off. And, well, they were young, you know, they yeah. didn't have business acumen. Uh, then they had this gravel pit, and what happened there, they didn't, they'd been using an easement to get their trucks in and out, didn't mm -hmm. realize they didn't own it. Somebody bought it up and cut them off. They oh, couldn't, well. wouldn't let them use it. But anyway, that's a, I was so glad to find that because that tells you right where it is. Because Mama yeah. had always told me it was down near near uh, Riviera, but see, it wasn't at all. It mm. was at uh, 10th, 10th Street, yeah. 12th Street. 12th Street. Yeah. Wow. And then they had their offices in the Holiday Building. Hmm. And uh, then they had the scabby foam, and that they worked out, and they called it Gross Laboratories because we used to call Grandmother Gross. Uh -huh. Now, what is scabby foam, though? I mean, is that... Well... See, the foam does the work. Yeah. Is it a cleaner or something? No, no, it's what people had unmentionable diseases. Oh. And had a scratch in the night, <laughs> and that's what they used. And they <laughs> sold those to the doctors per dozen, two-ounce bottles, four fifty. Oh, a gross my, was my. only 48 Now, see... That's us, expensive, well, I mean, back then that would have been yeah. quite a price. Well, that's true. They sold them to the doctors, and then the doctors sold them. They didn't put it on the market yeah. to give to people. Osksalb was the silent partner because it was his uh, formula that they used, and I've got the formula somewhere. Um, Public Improvement Bond Service was Gus's owned it. That's where they collection delinquent. Mm -hmm. uh, really, Mother was the one that was mostly there. She ran it because Gus was working elsewhere. And I worked there when I was seven. Mm -hmm. And it was in the KP building, 230 KP building. And as B. Doden Bine graduated high school, they'd come and type letters for Gus. And then when they'd go to apply for a position, they said they had office experience. <laughs> That's and how you get it. This was a uh, Bud's Business, the best printing company at 1506 North Illinois. At first it was just business, uh, and then later on they moved upstairs and lived there. He owned the two on either side, properties on either side, and towards the end he put a thing together where if he tried to convince the man on the corner to sell, and they were going to sell it to a conglomerate, and the guy held out for more money, it fell through. So I ended up having to sell it. This was um, Bud right there, and that's called an omnibus. It's pulled by horses, and it's a huge stagecoach is what it is. It takes 28 people, and I have no idea where that was taken. 
because Bud was the oldest child and he went on trips with grandfather. Grandfather was showing him the business mm -hmm. to how to sell furniture and if grandfather had lived, he would have been taken into LWR. But that's what happened. And this is my mama and I think that's the best picture we've got of her. Mm -hmm. And that's on the steps at 2040. And she was the original archivist. She kept all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's Gus and Grandma and Bud. And there's Bud's car. See that little thing they used to put their luggage on. And oh. there's Bud and Nell and my mama and Grandma in the backyard. And here's Lizzie, Aunt Lizzie, and my mother and Grandma. And when Grandma would let the hens have little baby chicks, then she'd put them in these separate places because the big adults would peck the little ones to death. Mm. So you had to keep uh -huh. them separate. And here's that thing that I wrote. And here's a picture of 2040, which is no more. Yeah. And uh, this is the house that the lady that lived there tore it down. I, I don't know whether she is. I'll have to research. She's either Isgrig or Minor. And I think it's Mrs. Isgrig. And when she left, she didn't want Grandma to have to have black people live next door to her. She tore down the house. And that was when I was three years old because I was standing in the bay window of the dining room and one of the beams came through the window. And the guy <laughs> came over scared to death. I'll bet. But I didn't have a scratch. <laughs> and this is a picture that Gussie drew when we were in California and he sent it to Mama. And it says... <laughs> Meow, meow, we want some of Gussie's eggs now. <laughs> the opening chorus sung every morning around the little monkey stove because the kitchen didn't have any heat. See, the kitchen used to be the back porch. That's cute. And here's Gus, and there's Grandma, his mother. And that used to be their playhouse, and Grandma turned it into a chicken coop. <laughs> Could you support it? Yeah, and here's more Grandma's Mama and Grandma, and that's more of her little chickies. And there she is, and that's the back of the house. And I explained how this is the sun, that's where her used to be her sewing room that she turned into a bedroom for Lizzie. And that was the bathroom. And it was so cold in the wintertime, you used to put antifreeze in the toilet to keep it from freezing. Oh, and these were double windows. Grandpa was very smart. That was for people had storm windows, yeah. but he had storm windows. Yeah. And they had a little thing at the bottom that you could lift up to get air in if you wanted. Mm. We didn't have to take them out. And this came out, and that was the pantry. And there's Bud waiting for Grandma to come. She's got one of the chickens. Like she, she's got her rooster there. And here was the cistern. And the cistern gathered the rainwater. See, the rainwater uh -huh. came down, went in the cistern. Uh -huh. And then in the kitchen, there were two... Uh, pumps, one on either side of the uh, sink. Uh -huh. You had to prime them first, but then that's where you got the cistern water, and we wow. used, to, used to wash our hair. So was there a, sto a storage tank? Yeah. That was underground. Underground. Mm -hmm. Wow. Grandpa knew a lot of stuff. Well, he did. Yeah, and there's Grandma's favorite. That's her favorite rooster. And here's her picture. Now, I will have to give you later her 70th birthday party. I have found it three times, and each time it gets misplaced. Okay, now we're on to the children. This yeah. is the oldest, and that's Bud's wedding. Look at that hat. There's Nell. Yeah. Now, she was the one that he was dating another girl, and she said, let's go visit my friend who just came out of the convent because she doesn't know anybody, and we'll go cheer her up. And so, well, uh, his girlfriend was playing the piano. He was holding hands with Nell. And before you knew it, there they got married. And this was her wedding dress. And there's Dorothy Ann. So I don't have a date of when they were married, but that sort of tells you. So she was in the convent for a while? And was she oh, yeah. She came out. Nun, yes, she was. And her brother's uh, wife died. And she came out to take care of his children. Mm. My. And so there was Gussie. He was the best man. And then over here, Marge had given me this picture, and she just said a group picture, but it was the wedding reception huh? of Bud and Nell. There she is in her wedding dress, and there is the maid of honor. Mm -hmm. 
And there's all the kids. There's Osk. Well, I've got them all written down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I thought that was neat. Yeah. And there's Bud's death notices. And then we go to John. And there's John's wedding pictures. Mm. And I didn't even know I had those. And Mary Bl- Emma Blanche was the flower girl. Isn't that neat? See, he and Gus sort of resemble each other. Well, they were next to each other. Bud and then Gu- and then John and then Gus. And here was your grandma McCowan. No, your great grandma, because there's your grandma. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's my mama. She was maid of honor. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Do you ever have those pictures? No. Let me look at these. You're going so fast. <laughs> <laughs> See, look at her hat. Yeah. You know, I, I was thinking of Grandma Bailey just yesterday because there was a young lady that came into the office and she wore a, uh, uh, a rather uh, uh, bright red dress with these big round white polka dots and my hmm. grandma Bailey I always remember her for some reason I always remember her in a navy blue dress with these you know bright white no polka kidding. dots and that's that's always the image that, that comes to my oh. mind is those, is those beautiful polka dots so oh. I was just thinking about her yesterday oh yeah there she is she's pretty pretty okay now these are all John so now you got a lot of pictures yeah. to share. He smoked a cigar. Uh oh. See all pictures. He got a yeah, cigar. He had a cigar in his hand. Yeah. Not good. And he had a bad heart. That was not smart. Yeah, no. That was not smart. Yeah. And there they are. There's Mary Blanche, your mama. Mm-hmm. And she's taking her nap. And there's John. He was so proud of her. That's a good picture, huh? That's the original picture. See, As these others have all been taken off negatives. Yeah. There she is. She cute. There's Grandma McElwain. Oh, she's walking there. There's three generations. There's Mary and her mama and her grandmama. And this is her other grandmama. And there's her mama and Nell and my mama. And there's John. So she's, she was old enough to sort of remember him. Mm-hmm. There he is again holding his cigar. <laughs> Only time he's not holding a cigar is when he's holding her. Now they took a family trip. This is Bud and that's Mama. And there's Nell and Grandma and John and Blanche and Mary Blanche. I don't know who those two are. Hmm. But she's got her arm around her, so maybe it's a relative. I don't know. Look, McCullin relative. And there's Mary standing by the car. Hmm. And there's John. There's Mary, showing her Easter basket. <laughs> and there she is with her mama and her grandmama and my mama. Mm-hmm. And there she is. These are interesting because they were taken at 2040 on Capitol. Uh-huh. But they show the houses across the street. Uh-huh. Yeah. And because none of those houses are in existence anymore. Yeah. What you, is she holding a cat or something in her hands there? does look that way, doesn't it? Could be. Maybe it's just a toy, though. The way she's holding it, I don't think it's... I don't know. I don't think it could be alive. I don't know. I don't know. And there she is with B and Dode. And there they are again. They're sitting on the cold thing at Grandma's house. And there's Mary. This was on 21st Street when they lived on 21st Street. He got a lot of those. That shows the drugstore there at 21st and uh, Illinois. 
She's got a little wagon and a little lunchbox. Don't you go have fun showing all these <laughs> I think so. Now, this is all, this has been torn down. I went by there the other day mm -hmm. and it's gone. Mm -hmm. But it was school 32 and called Captain Foster's school after a neighbor of grandmother, Bailey's. When Foster was in the Civil War, and upon his return from it, he went around to the schools giving patriotic talks and promoting the use of the American flag. Mm -hmm. This was the first public school in the nation to fly the American flag. Mm -hmm. So that's well worth knowing. And that's Mary and her mama. See, she got her new little white jacket yeah. for Easter. And there's her first communion, there's Mary. Mm -hmm. And she and Dorothy made their first communion at the same time. And there they are down in there, but I think that's Mary, but I wouldn't swear to it. Yeah. And here she is over here, holding a little prayer book. And that's the only picture I have of Penny Dog Fromhold. Wasn't that good? And there's Mary. Yeah. And there's the Saab girl, mm -hmm. and there's Dode. No, that's B, and there's Dode, and there's the other Saab girl. You can tell which originals and which I had made from yeah. negatives, can't you? And there's Mary again. She always stood so straight. There she is down there with Dorothy and the first two communicants. And this is taken at Dode's house because... From Hold House, see in the background is that uh, Altenheim senior place where people went to live. Mm -hmm. But that's the kind of a thing that Dode wrecked her knee on, I mean her leg on. She got a great, but she still got a scar. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's Mary right in there. Mm -hmm. There's Mary there. There's Dode. She cute little thing. That's Patty Brisbane. They used to. She stayed with the Frommies. She was a boarder at their house. There's Mary B back there. There's Rita May. And there's Mary. And there's Auntie Blanche. Mama used to call Auntie Blanche Bling. So that's yeah. another name you could use. Well, yeah, and we've heard that before. We've asked people where did she pick up that nickname, but I don't know that anybody knows or remembers. I don't think anybody knows. I think it was one of her, was it the story that one of her brothers... I don't Gave know. her that nickname or something? I have no idea. Have of course, no we idea. always we always just called Grandma Bailey Googie. Did oh, you know that story? No. Well, I guess when uh, my oldest brother Mike was real young, he couldn't say the word cookie. Oh. So, but every time he'd see, you know, Grandma, he he'd always go to her, you know, uh. cookie, cookie. But, <laughs> so, but what he was able to say was googie, googie, googie. <laughs> so, I mean, we I mean, we only called her Googie. All of our lives. Oh, that's my all, word. That's all we knew her by. Isn't that something? <laughs> oh, my. Well, there she is. And there's there's Grandma Bailey. And there's Nell, Bud's wife. And there is uh, Elizabeth Brennan Saab. And there she is up there. And Mary. And there's Mary down there with her little toy. And there she is helping Grandma feed the chickens in the backyard. And here is the sweetest one of all. There yeah. she is. The, playing with the pussy cats. She sure did love them. <laughs> she did, and I think that's where she started her love with them. She told me she always remembered grandma's having a closet full of kittens, and I used that in my story for the family yeah. house. Now, there you guys are. Yeah. How about that? That's us. I found those in mama's wallet. Isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. Look at that one. That doesn't look like Greg. Does it? No. That's what it said on the back. Who do you think it was? I don't know. I don't know. That's I just went, well, when you take you can take it out and look, yeah. but that's what she wrote on the back. And there she is. I got that from Dorothy. She had given Dota a copy of it for her 50th class reunion she had written that and I thought that was interesting so we put that in yeah so now you yeah. got that yeah and then you know this yeah that's, oh, that's, that's right I did I did go yeah. ahead that made for you that's yes great. you yeah. did 
And that worked out well. <laughs> yes, yes, worked very well. And so now we come to Gus, and he was the city civil engineer, so he's chief clerk. And here's a picture of him at his desk. There he is right there. Mm -hmm. He had little candle wick phones. Yeah. And that was in the city hall. And then we come, because he was the last one married, so he had to stay home and take care of Grandma, so he didn't get to get married till after Grandma died. So that's why he married late. Mm -hmm. And so he married a lady that had four children. And so there he is at 4554 North Delaware. That was taken in 1950. Mm -hmm. And then this is about Mama. And that's where she was married in California, St. Vincent's Cathedral. Isn't that a beautiful church? It is. Some multimillionaire donated that church and built it, and it's very, very ornate. So big. Look how, mm -hmm. You can get an idea of mm -hmm. that, how large by just where the people are standing. Mm -hmm. And here's her wedding pictures. Boy, isn't that a good one? Mm hmm. And this is my. Godfather, he was also their best man. That was Count Constantine J. Deshi, and I was named after him. Mm. And there is Lillian Zeller, who was my father's sister. And she was also my godmother. And there, there I am with Grandma and my mama. And that's her funeral thing. I'll get you another one, because that really doesn't go into detail about what she did. And I've got another one that I found yesterday. This is B. Bine and B. and Dode. And I love that picture. I thought mm -hmm. that was so cute. They haven't seen that one yet. <laughs> and here is a copy of Emma's wedding invitation, January 1916. And there's Albert on the front porch at Grandma's. And there's Paul Just and Albert. And Gus, and I think that's Albert, one of Albert's brothers. And there's Emma. She made a pretty bride. She was so young. And there she is with her mama and her three kids. And here's a picture of us taken in the 1930s. And they're going to die when they see that because they don't know I've got that picture. Aren't those hats something else? <laughs> yeah. I think that was when Lillian Zeller was visiting in Indianapolis and we, Mama had them take us out because none of us drove. Mm -hmm. So Bine drove. And then this is, now, Emma's children are in color. So this is Wilson, that's Emma Blanche, and she's the oldest. And there she is with her kids. And then this was her wedding picture. And there they are when they were teenagers. Yeah. And isn't, then... Isn't Marjorie the one that was uh, divorced not too long ago? Uh -uh. Or am I getting that confused? No, not Marge, uh-uh. None of those girls else. have been divorced. Well, that's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is Kathy then. She's the oldest. And she's got one, two, three, four, five, six kids. Mm. And she wrote a letter last Christmas and said what each one was doing. So mm -hmm. I put that yeah. in. Yeah. And this is her oldest boy, and he just bought a house. So last Christmas, I wanted a picture of the baby, and he sends me this humongous <laughs> thing, and there's the little baby down there. But you can see the new house. Yeah. So, and that's his wife and his other child. And that's Monica, and she just got married. They don't have any kids yet. And Rick, Jennifer. I highlighted the ones that carry on the family. I thought that'd be easier. Yeah. This is Margaret Ann's kids, but this is an old picture. Because mm -hmm. that tells you what they're doing now. Dewey's 13, and I think in that thing he was 6. This is Marge's family. She's the one that's got the big picture that I gave the big picture. Mm. She's teacher. Mm. 
And those are her kids. And then these are Blanche's. And they were taken at somebody else's wedding and they just got all together and had their picture taken. And then this is Mary B's group. And she's got five. And there's Alice and Joyce, my godchild. And there's Joyce and the twins when they were little. Mm -hmm. And then there's Alice with all her kids. Handsome family. Yes. Yes, they are. They're a lot of fun. Very nice. And then I don't have any pictures for Joyce or Monica or Linda. <coughs> and then we come to Dode. And that was for their 50th. <coughs> and there's her wedding picture. <coughs> and that's Chris. Mm -hmm. And his kids. And there's Gloria and her new husband. And this is her oldest boy. Mm. And these are his kids. And there's the E, and those are her kids. <coughs> and there's Larry and his boy. He's in Florida. And then here is Mark. And I don't have a picture of his little one. Dode said she gave it to me. I don't have it. I hope she finds it. She's so sweet. Mm -hmm. And that's that. Wow. Now, here's this. I cut this out. You, know, you can put it in later. That's the beauty of that kind of a book. You can add things, you know, and oh, subtract yeah. things. And, and um, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Love it's so nice of you to go through all that trouble. Oh, that is just so fun. I mean, you know, you know how valuable yes. priceless this is to me. Well, I tell you, you can't. I had just that I was going to give him to Marge, and I thought, what if something happens to Marge? His house goes up or something. So then I thought, and then they all started saying, well, I want a copy. Oh, I want a copy. Yeah. So yours is the first one done, and I've got eleven more to go. Well, that's more than you had originally planned to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to do three. I was yeah. going to do four. Be Dode, Bind, and you. That was four. And that's all I was going to do. And it just got out of hand. Well, as soon as you give, you know, a, a, as soon as you give one out, you know there's going to be six or seven more requests coming in. So the, <laughs> I think you better change your strategy to give them all out at once. Well, because that way you can say I'm done. I couldn't see that was what I thought. Well, see this. Well, see, first I won't part. tell any, I won't tell anybody, but just my brothers and sisters. <laughs> see what happened was I did do this. Ot was last year. I did Ot for last a year ago Easter, uh -huh. and then I did the Bailey part uh, at Christmas, and now I'm doing the children as they're married. That's that's for next Christmas. So I mean, that was my only salvation because that teacher said you got to break it down, and this is the easy part because I have all these old letters. Grandfather wrote a letter to Grandma every day he was on the road. Hmm. Beautiful script. Yeah. And she wrote him. Now, I don't have the letters she wrote him. I've got all his oh, letters. Wow. And he kept the letters that the children wrote him. Hmm. So we have that. Oh, my. And then we have Grandfather Ott's letters. Sometimes he wrote in English. I don't know what to do with the ones he wrote in German because I'm not going to publish those. <laughs> I don't know what they say, you know. And you're worried about it. Oh, you're right. <laughs> And then I have some of the letters that <laughs> Uncle Will wrote him. And Uncle Will lived in California, which I had no idea. Mm -hmm. That'd be my great uncle, because it was grandfather Ott's, great grandfather Ott's child. I had no idea he settled in California. He lived in California. They were talking about seeding, you know, and yeah. not being part of the. And he's telling all about this. But he's also telling how he's got, it sounded like consumption to me, but who knows, you know, in those days. Mm -hmm. 
And he was telling his father, I haven't written you because I have been so ill. You know, and uh, so you're getting sort of that family history too. I did want to put in the medical thing at the back, but uh, this thing just got beyond me. And there are some pictures that I want to put in there like of grandmother's 70th birthday. I have three different pictures. One's on the outside, taken in the back with all her seven grandchildren. And I'm holding Dode's skirt because I'm the baby. And then there's one inside at the table showing that china closet as a backdrop. Now, they didn't usually take pictures inside because they didn't have flashes yeah. in those days. But she had a bow window, bay window. And that gave enough light, I guess. It has Grandma and it has her brother John, and then it has Bine, and then it has Mary Blanche. And then you can't see the rest, of the, the rest are sort of indistinct. But if I can latch on to somebody that has one of these computer enhancements, I think we could probably get somewhere. And then somebody took a picture of the full length, getting everybody that was back by the sideboard, and the sideboard reflects their faces. So I've got that. I took that over to Mr. Poster. He didn't do too well. He has, he said, an enhancer on his computer, but it didn't, it didn't do the job. I need somebody more like into aerospace or something. I'm working on that because Annie's husband, I think, has been in the service forever, and surely he's got some kind of connection that he could do that. And... Uh, so, but anyway, that that's my next, after I get these done this Christmas, then I'm going to do the letter part. Of course, the Zellers want me to get doing theirs. And so, Louis, before he passed on, who was my father's brother, gave me a paper that he had gotten from his elderly aunt. And he was old, so gosh, she must have been Methuselah. And... She went back to 1540-something or other. Mm. And I said, I'm not taking the Baileys back that far. <laughs> you guys can, are on your own. I've done what I got. <laughs> but these chairs there that are hand-carved, uh -huh. those are Zeller chairs. The boy's grandfather, because he didn't know how to keep them occupied when his wife died, he had a priest come, a monk, uh, who knew... He was German, and he knew carving. And every Saturday he came, and the boys each carved a chair. So there were six chairs, and I've got five of the six. Are they and all different backs? Yes. Each boy did a different one. And uh, then this is John Ott's chair. Oh. And uh, I was going to see if you wanted to have his, John Ott also I have is a container, it's a footstool that was used to put furniture, uh, not furniture, but shoe polish in its shoe box. And he hand carved it and it's got all spindles in it. Somebody came in and thought they were being helpful and re-glued it and they didn't re-glue it right. So if I can figure out how to unglue it so that I can put it the way it's supposed to be, if you want it, you can have it. But I don't know how to, I've got to figure out how to unglue it because I don't know who did it. Unless it was the painter. He was here last week and he might have thought he broke it. And he re-glued it, but he didn't glue it right. Hmm. So it's supposed to be tongue and groove and he's got the tongue up here and the grooves down here. So he did, he, it, you know, it was one on either end and yeah. he got the one done and he just didn't see that the other side didn't do it. You want to see grandma's bed that everybody was born in? <laughs> Well, sure. While we're here, here. Well, yeah, better take the microphone here. Yeah. <clears throat> and I don't have any pictures of grandmother, great grandmother.